The four color theorem tells us that you only need four colors to color a map. That is any way that you divide up your plane into connected regions, like countries or states, such that when you color these countries or states, you want countries that border to be different colors, you'll always be able to find a way to color your map using only four colors. We prove this theorem by thinking about it in terms of graphs. Remember, a map can be represented as a simple planar graph. The four color theorem then tells us that you only need four colors to color such a graph so that the vertices are colored and any two vertices that share an edge are colored differently. That is, we say that any simple planar graph is four colorable. What we'll do now is sketch a proof that dates back to Kemp. This is a proof from the late 19th century where Kemp attempted to show why this theorem is true. What Kemp did is he had a very similar approach as the five color theorem. He began by using the fact that within any simple planar graph, there always exists some vertex of degree five or less. He then structured his proof as a proof by induction. Of course, if you have just one vertex, you can color that with just one color, so the theorem holds. Therefore, you can assume if you have n vertices, you can color those vertices with just four colors. Now we want to show that if we have a map or a graph with n plus one vertices, that we can color those with just four colors. How do we do this? Well, in your map or your graph, you pick out that special vertex V that has degree at most five. What happens if V, for instance, has degree four? Well, let's say we don't know how to color V, but we know that if we remove V from this map, we will know how to color the rest of it with just four colors. So V may be connected to four other vertices that are connected four distinct colors. Now, if these four other vertices were colored only, only three colors, we'd be done, because you can just color V whatever color remains. But if those four vertices use up all four of our colors already, it seems like we're in trouble. What are we going to color V? The answer is we need to find some way to recolor the rest of the graph to free up some color to color a vertex V. To do this, we can begin by asking, is there any connection between the, the chain of, of pink, orange vertices from the pink vertex on top to the orange vertex on bottom? It may be the case that this, there is some chain pink, orange, pink, orange, that connects the pink vertex on top to the orange vertex on bottom. Or you may be in a setting where that is not the case. If it is not the case, if there is no chain connecting the vertex on top to the vertex on bottom via a chain of pink, orange vertices, may, may, maybe he connects with some, some orange vertex up here, and he may connect with some pink vertex down here, but those two never link up if there's no connection in that chain, then you're free in one of those chains to simply exchange the pink for the orange. By swapping the colors of pink and orange, turning that first one for the first pink orange and that second orange pink, and so, so forth along the chain, You've now freed up the color pink. This center vertex V no longer borders a pink vertex. So we're free to color V pink, giving us a four coloring of the graph. However, if you're in the setting where pink and orange do are connected by a chain, the same argument won't work. Because if you just try to switch all of the colors, 
we run into the same problem that showed up in the five color theorem. Well, this pink will become orange and the oranges will become pink. But what that has effectively done is just swapped the position of pink and orange. Our vertex is still connected to a pink, it's still connected to an orange. So what can we do? Well, now we think about these other two vertices, the blue and the green. Are the blue and green connected by some chain of blue greens? That blue, for instance, could be connected to a green, and that green could be connected to some blue, and they may be connected to, to more greens and more blues and so forth and so on, but will those chains ever connect? They can't connect, because we have a wall between them of pinks and oranges. So in the plane, this blue-green chain is separated from this blue-green chain. We're now free to switch out the blues and greens in one of those chains since they're separate. In this chain on the right, we'll switch out the blues and the greens, recoloring this blue as green and the greens as blues, all the way throughout the chain as far as it might go. And look what we've achieved. Now the V no longer borders a blue vertex, it only borders greens, orange, and pink freeing us to color V blue. It seems that we're getting pretty good at this, but wait, we said that V is a vertex of degree five or less. We've only done the case where the vertex of V is four. Of course, if the vertex was three, two, or one, then we would easily have a color left over because we have four colors available to us. And if the vertex of V was five, but it only bordered colors that used three of the four colors, we'd be fine. But the remaining case is what if we have some vertex V that borders five other vertices, and those five vertices use up all four of our colors. For instance, you might have on top a pink, and then a blue, and then a green, and then an orange. And well, now we've used up all four, so this fifth one must be some other color again. Let's just assume without loss of generality, it's the blue again. Is there any way to recolor our map to free up a color that allows us to color V? To do this, we'll do a similar argument with chains. We're gonna say, again, there are two cases that we're going to consider. We're gonna consider if this pink green chain is connected or not. So let's draw those two cases. Here we have our pink and we have our green and we're wondering is pink and green connected by some chain? Do you see how this argument is going to go? If pink and green are not connected by a chain, that is if this pink just goes off to some perhaps some green and perhaps some pink but that this pink green never connects to the bottom pink green, then we are free to swap pink and green in one of the chains. If we swap it in but one of the chains, we've changed now this pink to a green and all the other pinks and greens have switched along the chain, meaning that V no longer borders a pink, freeing us to color V pink. However, if those pink and green do border, very similar to the previous argument, are connected by some pink green chain. So pink may be connected to a green and green may be connected to a pink and those may eventually meet up together along some chain. Now we can no longer do the swapping argument because although that pink would become green, the bottom green would become pink so we haven't freed up a color. So what we'll do now instead is we'll think about if this pink is connected to this orange. Okay, two possibilities. If pink is not connected to the orange, so pink may connect to a orange, and, and that orange may connect to some pink, but if there's no pink orange chain between the two, then we are free to switch pink and orange in one of those chains. So in this chain, we'll change all the pinks 
to oranges and all the oranges to pinks. Look what we've accomplished. We've now freed up the color pink. The center vertex V only borders blues, a green, and oranges. The pink has changed to orange, freeing pink to color it, leaving us with just one case left to consider. What if we have a vertex V? of degree five, just as before, but now you have both that this pink on top is connected by some chain, by some pink green chain to the green on bottom. So it may be pink connected to a green, which may be connected to a pink and so forth and so on until it connects on bottom. And this pink on top is connected by some pink orange chain to the orange on bottom. So you may have the pink connected to an orange, connected to a pink, connected to an orange, alternating along some pink orange chain. What can we say then? Here's the solution. Here's Kemp's argument. Kemp says you may have these kinds of, of, of connections by chain, so you can't make the previous swaps. But by having these connections, it's building walls that are separating this blue vertex away from these other vertices. In particular, if you consider the blue-orange chain that may come off of this vertex. So from this vertex, you may have some blue-orange chain. It is trapped inside by this pink-green. It can't get out. And this blue vertex, if you consider any green vertices that may be connected to along some blue-green chain, it is trapped, so it cannot connect with this green. What that means in particular is that in both of these chains, we can do a swap. We'll swap all of the blues with all of the greens and all the blues with all of the oranges. That will give us a new chain where we'll have, now we'll have Instead of blue, it'll be green. All our blues will become greens. And all of our greens will become blues on the right, on the side. On the other side, we'll have all of the, all of the blues will become oranges. And all of the oranges will become blues. So, so, so that orange should become blue and that blue should become, should become orange. And here's the argument, that we can do this without impacting these other colors because this chain is stuck inside of here. So he's not gonna come out, he's not gonna reach that other orange. And this chain is bounded by these pink oranges, so he won't come out and touch that green. But look what we've done. We've changed this from blue to orange, we've changed this from blue to green. Now the center vertex no longer borders a blue, freeing us to color the center blue. Kemp thought he had proved the four color theorem. He published this in 1879. And for over a decade, it seemed to have been settled. But then the mathematician Hayward discovered a fatal flaw in this proof. You might wanna pause right now and see can you figure out where the flaw is? Hayward gave the following counterexample. He said, consider a graph, just like in these settings, where you have some vertex V of degree five, and that vertex V of degree five may be connected as follows, just as before, to a pink, to a blue, to green and orange. But then Hayward says, imagine if this graph goes on and looks something, something like this. Where on bottom, we'll have another pink that's connected with these four edges, a pink of degree four. Here we'll have a orange, 
of degree 4, and here we'll have a green of degree 4 as well. Hayward says Kemp forgot to think about this case. What can we say about this case? Well, look, look what's going on here. Are we in the first setting? No, we're not in the first setting, because if you look at the connections between pinks and greens, we have that this pink moves to this green, moves to this pink, moves to this green. So in fact, we do have a chain connecting the pink to the green. We have a pink green chain connecting this pink with this green. Are we in the second subcase where you have that this um, pink is, is, is not connected to this orange? Well, in fact, the pink is connected to the orange by a pink orange chain. Pink to orange to pink to orange. So the pink and orange are connected by a chain as well. So then we must be in this subcase where both the pink and green are connected by a chain. Here's the pink green chain and the pink and orange are connected by a chain. And so then the solution in this last case, Kemp had said, was you should just take this blue and switch the blue with the oranges in the blue orange chain. So let's do it. Let's switch that blue with the orange. So we make this an orange and we make this a blue. And then we said on the other half, we want to switch the blues and the greens. Okay, let's do it. Let's switch that blue and that green. Ah, oh, you see the problem? This blue becomes green, that green becomes blue. But what do you end up with in this recoloring? Yes, you free up blue here to color the center blue. That's true. But in the process, you caused a new problem in your graph. You now have two blue vertices that are connected by this edge violating colorability. You have two adjacent regions in your map that are colored the same. This was devastating. Not only was this proof of the four color theorem proved wrong, but other proofs that have been offered also have flaws in them. As we moved into the 20th century, mathematicians tried to repair this, but the more they did, they found that there were more and more and more cases for them to continue to investigate. It was not until the 1960s and into the 70s that finally we were able to offer a proof with the help of a supercomputer to analyze all of the various cases.